So it says the figure below illustrates a thermodynamic process. And um, so the thermodynamic, so uh, the process from S to R has a name. It's an isobaric contraction. Um, so good. <laughs> Process from R to S doesn't really have a name. It belongs in the category of a thermodynamic process that's an arbitrary process. The only real requirement is that this must be a quasi-static process so that every point along this path has a well-defined pressure, volume, and temperature. And that's something that we'll go into more next week, so let me not belabor that point. But this is a process that doesn't have a special name, it's just illustrated on a PV diagram and because it's illustrated, we can analyze it. So, part A asks, what is the change in internal energy for the process represented by the closed path shown below? You may assume cycle starts at R and ends at R. Oh, that actually um, has a very quick answer which hint to a kind of hint at. Um, so the change in internal energy is actually zero joule. Um, if I may belabor the point a little bit, this is, um, we say some, there's this saying, temperature is a state function. That it only depends on state of, uh, of a gas. And what we mean by that is um, on this PV diagram, there's a feature that we don't normally um, illustrate because we are lazy and we don't want the diagram to be um, cluttered. But what we can illustrate here is what we call an isotherm. It's a set of points that represent all the points that have the same temperature. So there's an isotherm that contains the point at R. There's an isotherm that contains um, these other points. And there's an isotherm that goes through point at S. Um, so, and what so good to remember about these isotherms is whenever a uh, gas is at this particular state, it has a particular temperature that's associated with that isotherm. So whenever gas is um, along this isotherm, including this one point, it has the, the temperature that's uh, associated with that isotherm. So after the gas completes this cycle, it comes back to this temperature, the internal energy of a gas is directly related to its temperature, the degree of freedom over two and kBT. So if the temperature didn't change, then internal energy didn't change. So change in internal energy is zero. <laughs> um, so it's once again, one of those questions that masquerade as a quantitative question, but are actually conceptual. Um, yeah, if the curved section between R and S is semi-circular, kind of confirming what it appears to be in this particular scale of PV diagram, calculate how much net heat is absorbed by the gas over one cycle, starting and ending at R along the closed path in the direction indicated. So this is an application of first law. And I hope a hint to get at it. Uh, sometimes when people look at this, I think sometimes people have this instinct to break this up into different parts, which, you know, is not a bad instinct on a general term. It's kind of the default approach in physics in that you uh, break up any large problem into constituent parts so that it's easier to digest. Now, there are circumstances where that is unnecessary. In physics 4A, you saw this as an example when you do projectile motion. Like for the time of the uh, projectile motion in flight, sometimes people like to break it up into time to reach the top and, and time to come down, unnecessary. And so for this question, we are going to be applying the first law of thermodynamics, that change in internal energy is given by net heat transfer minus work done by the system. And when we call something a law in physics, with a very few exceptions, we call it a law because there are no exceptions to the law. And first law of thermodynamics has no known exceptions to it. So it doesn't matter if it's a process from R to S 
or if it's an entire cycle of process. This law continues to apply to the whole thing. So we can apply to the entire cycle. That'll make our work a little bit easier. And I hope that's what hint we get said. Um, yeah, it doesn't highlight it, fine. Um, anyways, we did that. Um, we can see that our answer to part A already simplifies the answer a little bit. Our change in internal energy is zero. And um, so, which means that heat absorbed over one cycle should be equal to the work done by the system. And I guess what we have to be careful is it should be the net work done, which will give, which will be given by this semicircle thing. And um, I guess it's worth recalculating. So let me just do that quick calculation again. This area here, as we've done it before, this area was given by the area of the semicircle. Uh, pi, the radius is one, one squared over, that's the area of circle, so half that in the units of atmosphere liter. And I did this on Ofram Alpha last time. I'm gonna do the same thing because, you know, I don't want to waste your time. <laughs> At least that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Pi over R, atmosphere liter in the unit of joules. So that should be 159 joules. Okay, let me just uh, double check that these two answers are correct. Good. <laughs> um, and then move on to part C. Part C, if the path is uh, traversed in the opposite direction, what is the net direction of a heat exchange? Um, tra traversing, oh yeah, I guess that's where you kind of have to understand correctly what we mean by area under the curve. Um, and so the, the answer should be uh, flows out of the gas on net. And the way you get to that answer is through this process. So um, when we were um, calculating this area under the curve, this is what we did. Whenever the curve went from left to right, we counted this area as positive. And whenever the curve went from right to left, we counted this area as negative. I'm oh, sorry, I kind of stopped in the middle of writing the inequality there. So that's how we came up with the area that we were actually calculating for the network, that it's the area between the two curves. So when we change the direction in which this curve goes, that along the top it goes from right to left, and on the bottom it goes left to right, the basic underlying rule we are applying didn't change. When we go right to left, we count the area under that as being negative. And when you go from left to right, we count the area under that as being positive. So what that means is we would still have the same magnitude of area, this enclosed area here, except that it would have reverse sign. So Q net in the case of um, reverse the directions would be negative. And if you review the sign conventions, what then negative sign means is heat flow out of the system. So that's the answer here, net heat flows out of the gas on net. So that's question eight.